The interesting thing that happened with these guys this month, I'm really happy with how this tank looks actually. There's a lot of activity. I stupidly did that. I shouldn't have done that. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my April 2022 fish room update tour. So let's get straight into it. And this is the first tank getting an update this month. It contains my Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold, as well as Metricama Kawenga Gold Fry. Now, they look around the same size. The Kawenga Golds actually look a little larger than the Gold Ocelatus. However, the Kawenga Golds are approximately six weeks old here, while the Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold are about six months old. Now, you can see the size difference, the speed in which Kawenga Golds uh, grow. Kawenga Golds are from Lake Malawi. Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold are from Lake Tanganyika in Africa. I find that mouth brooding cichlids as a whole grow faster than substrate spawners. So the Koanga Golds, they are mouth brooding cichlids from Lake Malawi. I won the parents in a raffle and they have had heaps of fry for me. Whereas the Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold, they are shell dwelling cichlids from Lake Tanganyika. They breed in shells, their fry grow a lot slower and Lamprologus ocellatus gold are actually one of the smallest cichlids in the world, being a shell dwelling cichlid. So their adult size is approximately two inches, whereas the Kawanga golds, they can grow up to 15 to 20 centimeters, so a lot larger. And like I said, they put on size a lot quicker, heaps quicker. So with this aquarium, I've put these two batches of fry together because they're approximately the same size. Uh, they won't be together for a long time. Uh, if anything, I'll be able to sell off these Kawanga Gold Fry in another month or two. Uh, but putting these two uh, lots of fish together has saved me three tanks on my sump system. And I now have three tanks empty, ready to go for the next generation of fry. So I'm really happy that I've got three spare tanks on my sump system. These tanks that you see here, they run on double headed sponge filters. Each of these aquariums, they're all individual. They're not plumbed together like the sump system. I don't even really like to put the Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold in these aquariums either. And the main reason for that is there is black contact paper on all sides of these aquariums. The Ocelatus Gold generally darken up in these aquariums. I've done them before, I've had them in these aquariums before and they will darken up over time. In the past when I've done this, I've put them back into the sump system with uh, tanks that only have the back pane of glass painted black and they brighten up again uh, after a few weeks. So it's not a massive issue, but I just want the room and I've popped them in here for the time being. So I'm really happy with how this tank looks actually. There's a lot of activity going around. Uh, you've got the Kawanga Gold Fry. They're really uh, not shy at all. They're pretty tame fish and aren't scared of anything. And uh, it's really helped the Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold feel a bit more at ease in this aquarium. And they are co-inhabiting in here with three albino bristlenose catfish, the short fin variety. Anyway guys, so that's that aquarium. Let's go on to the next one. And this is the next tank getting an update this month. This tank contains one of my breeding pairs of Gilodidochromus regani. Now if you saw my video a couple of weeks back where I showed this aquarium, it was full of fry that were approximately four to five, some of them were even six centimeters long and they were fry that I'd raised together with the breeding pair that you see here. They're actually raised in a different tank with the breeding pair and I just moved them all into this aquarium very hastily because I just needed room in the fish room. I stupidly did that. I shouldn't have done that. I should have separated the parents from the fry at the time. It would have been a lot easier to distinguish what fish were the parents and what fish were actually the fry. Uh, because they were almost all the same size, it was a difficult thing to do. But I slowly, slowly worked it out and whittled down the amount of fry I had in this tank to about three. Worked out which were the breeding pair and because the breeding pair would stick together and they would harass the last remaining uh, Gelidochromus fry, if you can call it that, even though it was about six centimeters long. They managed to corner that in the tops of the aquarium, so that's how I was able to identify which two fish were the breeding pair, the original breeding pair, and which were the, the fry, the babies from that breeding pair. Able to catch that last one out and put it in my five foot aquariums. And as you can see, they've got fry. They actually spawned in this aquarium with about five other Regani in this tank from their previous spawn, which was months ago. Uh, and those Regani thankfully didn't harass the fry. And there is a lot of fry in here. I'm, I'm thinking about 30, upwards of 30. Obviously it's very difficult to count them in this aquarium. They're all hide. Uh, some of them come out in the open and graze off algae as you can see here. Uh, but they are cute little fish. They've got nice little markings on the sides of their bodies. They're about one centimeter long here. 
and they are a few weeks old, at least a month old now. The interesting thing with Regani is the adults have horizontal bars all down the length of their body. Over the fry, they have vertical bars. If you look closely in this footage here, you can see they've got like a vertical barring down the length of their body. And it's interesting that they will transition into their adult coloration or adult markings with that horizontal barring and no vertical barring at all eventually. And that happens once they reach about the two to three centimeter mark, they really start to lose that vertical barring. I'm not sure why that is the case, why they have vertical barring to start with. It might be something to do with camouflage in the wild to help protect them, blend into the rocks, break up their outline, the body outline, the body shape of the fish. Maybe that's why they have vertical barring when they're smaller and transition into horizontal barring as they grow up. Uh, but I'm not sure about that. It's just something that I've thought about as to why they might have that. But yeah, great little fish. I love these guys. Uh, these were my original breeding pair of Gelidochromus regani. I've got a second breeding pair in the fish room as well, and they breed in a four foot aquarium by two foot high by two foot wide with uh, the adult Coenga Golds. So the parents of the Coenga Golds you saw previously. The adults are in a tank with my regani, my second regani breeding pair, and they don't harass the regani fry either. And I've raised two generations of regani fry in that four foot aquarium with massive Coenga Gold, and it's been a success. I just don't know why they don't harass the fish. It's fantastic, I've been pretty lucky maybe, but uh, it's an awesome tank to watch as well because you're seeing such small fish with huge fish and they just don't harass them. And it's just uh, a nice, maybe a unique thing to see. So I love Regani. They're a nice little fish from Lake Tanganyika. Uh, they're actually the largest growing of all the Gelochromus species. Uh, if you want more information on these fish, you can watch the in-depth species profile I did on them here. And I go into detail about the Gelochromus genus and uh, Regani and raising, specifically breeding and raising Regani. So uh, if you're interested to watch that video, I really do suggest you watch it because it's packed full of uh, interesting facts. But yeah, there you go. This is my Regani breeding pair, the original breeding pair that I've had in the fish room. So by now, a lot of my long-term subscribers would know what aquarium this is. And obviously it is my white Atelopologus calvus aquarium. You're seeing the male on camera here. And you probably know the reason why I'm showing you this aquarium. And it is because of course they've spawned again. Really happy with this breeding pair. They are amazing and done so well for me. I absolutely love these fish. After all, they are my channel logo. If you see the logo on my YouTube channel, that fish, if you've ever been wondering what type of fish that is, it is an Alto Lamprologus calvus. So beautiful fish, I love these guys. Uh, I think I've spawned them now for the 10th time. I could be wrong, I'll put the correct amount on the screen here. I'll have to go back through my videos to work it out, but I do believe this is my 10th spawn. So the female is in the shell on the left and she's been in there for about a week. I've seen her a couple times over the last few days and I've been, when I've been feeding them and uh, she, she's come out, she's been eating, which is great, but I know she is in that shell. So I expect to see fry in the next two to three weeks to exit that shell. I'll catch them out, pop them in a grout aquarium on this rack, on this sump system on the top row, and then they'll grow out there for a number of months until I'll be able to put them in my new five foot long grow out aquariums. So really pleased with these guys. They've done so well for me and I'm so grateful to own this fantastic breeding pair of Alto Lamprologus calvus. And the last tank I'm showing you guys this month is this one and a lot of you long-term subscribers would recognize it as my Neo Lamprologus Lelupi breeding pair tank. As you can see, they've spawned again. Nice amount of fry out of this spawn. It could have been larger, unfortunately. I did have some older generations of fry in this aquarium when this spawn was developing. And that larger spawn did unfortunately eat some of the eggs until I was able to catch them all out and put them in a different aquarium. And this is what survived. Not one of my larger spawns, unfortunately again, because I left the fry in with the parents for a little bit too long and uh, the female wasn't able to identify her older fry as a threat to her newest generation of fry. However, the interesting thing that happened with these guys this month is that the female has successfully raised a second batch of fry with a different generation of fry in the aquarium at the same time. So there's actually two generations of fry in this aquarium. I'm really glad that she's been able to do that. She was able to identify the older generations of fry as a threat and protected the new spawn from them. And that new spawn is huge. They're actually hiding in the cave 
that she is at right now. She's really protecting them, doing a really good job of protecting those new fry from the older fry you see swimming around the aquarium right now. And because of that, I am expecting, yeah, that, that spawn to be huge. And the fry that you see swimming around the aquarium, they're actually like three or four weeks old. They're not that old. Uh, it's just that uh, Le Lupi fry are very tiny when they're newly born. And that new batch that have hatched are approximately one week, one week free swimming. So I've been feeding this aquarium a lot with baby brine shrimp and live microworms, and they've been thriving. So I'm just really pleased that she's finally been able to raise two generations of fry at the same time because I knew that second spawn that, they, that she had was massive. I could see the amount of eggs that she had in that cave where she is actually right now. And I really didn't want to lose that batch because the spawn that they're currently with, there's not that many fry. Uh, and I just was just hoping she would be able to, her instinct, I was hoping her instinct would kick in and that she would protect that new batch. And thankfully she did. Now I'm gonna be rewarded with a heap load of fry. I haven't seen them all yet because they haven't really ventured too far from their mum's cave, but they are there. So you can see her protecting the fry right now, making sure the older generation don't get near them. So really pleased with this outcome. Uh, normally when this sort of thing happened where she would spawn and have an older generation of fry in the tank, the male would bash her up thinking, well, I believe he would suspect that she ate the fry and then he would uh, bash her up and she'd be hanging around the corners of the aquarium for a day or two uh, before they make, they make up and uh, their, their bond forms again. Uh, but because she's been able to protect this second generation uh, from, the new, from the older generation, uh, their bond hasn't broken for a very long time. So it just goes to show that her being able to protect that younger generation, uh, the male isn't blaming her for any lost fry. <laughs> Uh, which is a really good sign. So that's why I suspect uh, he thinks that she's eating them when they go missing and it's actually the older generation of fry that are doing that. But th yeah, thankfully she's been able to recognize the older generation of fry as a threat finally and has been protecting that newer generation from them. So she's done a very, very good job this time around. But yeah, there you go guys, my Neil Emperor Logos Le Lupi breeding pair. Love these guys. So there you have it guys, my April 2022 Fish Room Update Tour. Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.